Okay, so today we're going to start the series on elementary programming for EECS 1021, the object-oriented programming course from sensors to actuators. We're going to start with basic uh, intro to Java, so general intro to Java. And we're going to start off by talking about what are the steps in development. All right, well basically when, when you're working on problems in this course, you'll start by creation of a new Java class. And that typically means that you're going to be using an, uh, an editor, an IDE, like IntelliJ or Eclipse, and you're going to be writing some, some programming solution in there. Once you're ready to go, you save the file, and then you move on to compiling it. You take a look to see if it compiles. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. So let's say it doesn't. Well, you might either have syntax or type errors, and so then you're going to want to circle back and fix whatever was going on based on whether it was a syntax error or a type error. If, on the other hand, uh, after you've done some development, you have compiled it and it is now running, so it's running along and it's doing what it's supposed to be, well, hopefully, um, well, maybe it crashes. If it crashes, then you have what's referred to as a runtime exception, and then you circle back and you go back into the editor and you, and you fix whatever you hope you discovered to be the root cause of that particular crash. If it doesn't crash and it terminates, so it, it ends, is the final um, state of affairs what was expected? Did you get the expected output? If you didn't, then you likely have a logical error, and that could be an error in your in equations or it could be in the, the steps that were taken during the program. Uh, and then again, that needs to be fixed in the editor and then you go through this process again. And then finally, if there were no uh, errors and there was just expected output, then you have a correct solution. That's basically the development process that you're going to be going through when you're developing solutions uh, in Java, just like it was when you were developing solutions for MATLAB. Now, there are differences between how you develop solutions in Java versus how you develop them in programming language like uh, MATLAB. For instance, the entry point of execution for your program is going to be the main method. Okay. And methods are basically the same thing as functions. So for now, um, and, and most sort of simple programs that you'll be writing, the, uh, the, the solution that you come up with, with will be defined within the body of the main method. And the main method is, we can see it with the keyword right here, main. Okay. So it's between that curly brace right there and that curly brace right there. Now, the main method is treated by Java as the starting point of execution for your program. It will execute things in sequence, that is, it has sequential execution, and the execution starts with the first line in the main method. So basically, right after this curly brace, whatever happens here, that's what's going to be executed first. And then it will go line by line from top to bottom until there are no more lines to execute and then it terminates or ends. And, th and that process going from top to bottom you find in most programming languages and uh, MATLAB is no exception to that. So when you, you did your MATLAB programs in the previous semester you saw um, the, the sequence of events just like you will here. The words are a little bit different, the way it's structured is a little bit different, but it goes basically from top to bottom. Okay. Next, we need to talk about the difference between compile time and runtime. These two terms refer to two stages of developing your program. At compile time, what we're talking about is when you're editing the programs in your IDE. Now, this could be either an IntelliJ or Eclipse. And there are two types of compile type errors or compile time errors. The first one would come from syntax. Okay, so we call them syntax errors. And that's because your program, the, the thing that you're writing, uh, has words in it or structures in it that don't conform to the grammar that defines Java. And this could be basically you're missing some semicolons, right? So you're missing something like that, or you're missing a curly brace, either an opening or closing one, or maybe one of these round parentheses. Now, the syntax is defined in a number of different places. You could, for instance, take a look at examples of syntax in a book like uh, the Java Pocket Guide, which is a fantastic little book. Um, or you go to the link right here uh, at Oracle on the Java language specification. That's a whole lot more dry, but it's, it's a pretty authoritative source of information with respect to the, the, the syntax for Java. There are also type errors, 
and and that refers to uh, the manipulation of data uh, in an, an inconsistent way. All right. So, for instance, um, if you were to uh, uh, take the string York and multiply it by 23. That's not consistent. You're not supposed to do it that way, right? That's not how you manipulate two different pieces of data. A string versus a number, multiplying it together, the result isn't going to be uh, a good thing. So that would be a type error, and, and that's something that you want to avoid as well. Okay, and um, and then from there, you might have runtime errors. So what happens when, after you compiled it, and it has compiled, and now the program is executing, the main method, for instance, is, is going and, and the lines that you've put in there are running one after the other, and then something wrong happens. That's an error that occurs at runtime. And so we have uh, basically two things that, that need to be distinguished here. You have exceptions, and these are when your program crashes and it ter or uh, terminates abnormally, all right? And, and that could be due to things like uh, dividing a number by zero. So that's an arithmetic exception. You could also have array indices that are out of bounds. And that would be another type of exception. Or uh, things like null pointer exceptions. These are all things that can, that can occur that you might not catch uh, when you're compiling it, but will occur during uh, running of your program. There are also logical errors. And, uh, and, and these are similar to the type errors that you saw earlier, okay? Um, but these are happening during the execution or during the runtime of your program. And so your program will terminate normally. Like it doesn't crash or anything like that, um, but it doesn't behave as expected. And, and you have seen this before with other programs that you've written. This happens all the time, and it requires you to often step back and come at it again. All right. Uh, one partic particular example would be, for instance, if you're calculating the area of a circle, okay, and that would mean that you were calculating it with a radius uh, of r, and you would say pi multiplied by r squared. That that would be to calculate the area of your circle. But if you had said two multiplied by pi multiplied by r, that would give you, well, not what you're looking for. The the logic behind that particular um, equation is wrong. So. Here's other examples of compile time versus runtime errors. So uh, let's say you're doing a computer lab test and, and you know the stress is on and you've submitted the program and it doesn't compile. Well, that means basically your program can't even run, okay? You, you, you've written something, but you can't even get to the point of being able to demonstrate it doing something. That, that's a problem. And so when that happens, and it will happen, what should you do? Well, basically, you got to practice. Practice writing programs, as many different programs as you can. Program, program in um, in the IDE with IntelliJ, program uh, using your, your project work, uh, program in the lab activities, uh, do the examples that are on the LMS, on E-Class, the interactive ones. These are all good um, good opportunities for you to, to get the practice that you need in order to figure out what parts need to go into a working program. Okay, and then uh, when, when you do come up with sort of mix-ups in that writing, how do you fix it, okay, to make it work? Now, you have other types of, of problems. For instance, when it compiles, but it runs uh, with exceptions or unexpected outputs. What, what should you do? Well, really, often it's a question of stepping back. And, um, and this might seem at first like a waste of time, but it turns out that a lot of the time, it actually saves you time in the end plan out your program. Or if you've already written it out, map it out with a flowchart. Okay. Um, having a visual on paper, not on the computer, on paper representation of what the program is supposed to do will often give you uh, insight into uh, what you intended versus what is actually going on. Talking about it, that is often a very good idea. Talk with a friend, a partner, a colleague, somebody in the family, uh, your dog, sometimes just going to the mirror and ranting in front of the mirror will help. Walking away from the computer, getting some air, trying again. These are, you know, go, go get a burger, come back, uh, get, get a glass of water, come back at it later, um, maybe sleep on it and, and, you know, come back another time. These are all things that you can, you can do in order to, well, figure out what was going wrong in the first place. And these things are normal. It happens to the best of us. It is a normal part of the development process. Errors happen, how you deal with them is important. Okay, that's that's key. All right, 
Now, we're talking about flowcharts. Well, that has to do with the documentation of your code. Documentation is super important. Again, it might seem like a waste of time at first, but the thought process that you go through at one point, you might not remember down the road. It might not be clear. And so it's important uh, during the design or implementation phases that the decisions that you make are carefully documented at the right place in your programming solution. That means to start off with that you have comments and you can have single lined comments in Java. That means putting a double slash in front of some statement. Okay. You can also put a double slash at the end of some code, some program algorithm over here, and you can put it at the end of the line and you can do that too, or you can put it underneath something, you put double slash right there, and that will get you um, a comment in your code that uh, will be for you, or maybe your, your work partner, your, your lab partner, um, but the program will ignore it. Now you can also have multiple lined uh, comments, and basically those are slash star to begin and star slash to end. And anything between those is a comment. Here's a one line comment, and here is a multi lined comment. Okay, and usually, your ID will help you by um, if you've got multiple lines in here, we'll add stars, they're not necessary, but they help uh, in terms of visualization of, of what's a comment and what's not. Um, but what's important is that you have that at the beginning, and that at the end. All right, comments do not affect the runtime behavior of your program. Okay, and that's important. These are useful for revisions and for extensions of your code. Mm -hmm.